In this video, we're going to discuss scripting in Paraview. Why do you want to use scripting? Well, the obvious answer is to automate mundane or repetitive tasks. For example, if you have a large time dependent simulation and you have a lot of output files, then you can actually write a script for visualizing a single time step of your simulation. And then you can put that script into a loop, into a Python loop, and then uh, running the loop, you will get the same visualization for each time frame of your simulation. Also writing a script lets you store your workflow and document your workflow. You can actually write a script and run it you know, a year from now, or perhaps you can pass it to colleagues so they can reproduce your visualization. And also using Paraview Python scripts is really useful for running visualization on a cluster because you can submit your visualization script as a bad job without opening any windows, and then it will create your beautiful visualization you know, in a few hours or overnight so that you wake up and you have a nice movie waiting for you. There are many different ways of running Python scripts in Paraview. So one of the ways will be to go to view and then open Python shell in the GUI. Let me show this. So here I start with my Paraview 5.8 from scratch and I will go into view and then Python shell. And here I have a Python shell. So here I can actually type the commands. You can see it's Python 2.7. And actually this depends on the version of Paraview and on your operating system. So I think right now, if I'm not mistaken, Paraview on a Mac is the only Paraview that still uses Python 2.7 as opposed to Python 3. So Paraview on other operating systems changed to Python 3 some time ago. Uh, right now, uh, if you want to use Python 3 uh, in Paraview on a Mac, you actually have to recompile Paraview against Python 3. So here you can actually type in anything you want. For example, you can say print one divided by two. And we see that this is Python 2.7 because in Python 3, this will actually produce 0.5. So here you can simply type any Paraview Python command, and then this shell will uh, run alongside the GUI and you will see a visualization from the uh, Python commands right here in the visualization window. Another way to run a Python script will be to open a shell inside a terminal. In each Python uh, download, there will be a command called pvpython. And to find it, for example, on a Mac, let me go back to, uh, let me go to my shell. And I have a command called pvpython. It's alias to this uh, command inside of Paraview 5.8 application. And so when I start it, uh, it starts Paraview server in the background. And then here I can type any uh, Python command and, and it will work. Also, if I already wrote a Paraview Python script, I can run it from uh, the terminal using pvbash command. So pvbash followed by the name of the script. And pvbash is also sitting in the same directory in the applications folder on a Mac. So if I type pvbash, I actually have an alias for it that points to this Paraview 5.8 application. So pvbash is sitting right there. And then on Linux, you will have pvpython and pvbash in the directory where you install Paraview. So on Windows, you also have pvpython and pvbash, and these can be accessed via the DOS prompt. Uh, where exactly find these utilities on Windows, I don't know. So you have to look for them inside your downloaded Paraview application. Uh, you can also run the Paraview Python script from the GUI by going uh, right here in the shell by clicking the Run Script button, and then you can navigate to the location of the script, and then you can run it. Also, you can start Paraview, so you can say uh, Paraview, and of course you need to either have an alias or to set up a path so that when you type Paraview, uh, your uh, computer knows where to find it. So I can type Paraview and then dash dash script, equal to, and then I can pass the name of the script and hit enter, and it will start the Paraview GUI and it will auto run the script. Let's take a look at a simple script. You can find the script inside the uh, zip download, the same zip download that contains the PDF of these slides. Uh, inside the code subdirectory, there is a file called displaysphere.py, and it's very short, so here's the entire script in this slide. Let's just go through this uh, line by line. So first of all, we import everything from the paraview.simple module. We import all the functions. And one of these functions is capital S sphere. So this is case sensitive. And this function simply creates an object in the pipeline browser. So a VDK sphere object. 
And calling this function is exactly the same as going into sources in the Paraview GUI and bringing up the sphere object and then clicking apply. So the output of the sphere function is passed to a lowercase uh, sphere variable. And this variable is actually a class in Python. So it has many attributes. And one of its attributes is theta resolution. So here we're printing the th uh, theta resolution of the sphere. And the default resolution is 8 when you create a new sphere. And then we set this theta resolution to 16. So let's make the sphere slightly higher resolution. Then we turn on the visibility of the sphere in the pipeline browser in the view. And then we render the sphere. So running show is the same as clicking on the eyeball icon next to the sphere in the pipeline browser in the GUI and making sure that it's visible. So let's run the script. Make sure that you have the Python shell open inside the Paraview GUI. To access it, you simply go to view and then make sure that Python shell is selected. And then I click on run script. Then I will navigate to the location of my uh, script. So I'm going to go into uh, Paraview folder and uh, inside the codes folder, uh, there is uh, the display sphere.py uh, script. And then I just say, okay, and the script will run. The script created a sphere object. And then right here in the shell, it printed the uh, default resolution. Uh, so it printed the default theta resolution of the sphere, which is eight. Right, so it printed eight, and then it's changed its resolution to 16. So you can actually see here in the properties of the sphere in the GUI that theta resolution is 16, and the fire resolution is still equal to eight. And then we turn on, uh, we, we make the sphere visible in the pipeline browser. So now you see there is the this eye icon next to the sphere. The sphere is visible, and then we render the sphere. So you can run the uh, commands in the preview shell and interact with the GUI at the same time, right? So we can continue working with this uh, visualization. For example, I can make the file resolution uh, high. Let's say I want to make it 30. Let's actually make the th theta resolution also high. Let's say 30. And now we have really high resolution sphere. So let me delete the sphere object. And then uh, let me go to the next script in the slides. So the next script is display wireframe dot pi. And this script just shows you an example of running a filter. So here we're importing again everything, all uh, functions from the preview.simple module. We create a sphere object with the same sphere function, but this time we pass the theta and phi resolution as inline arguments to the sphere function. And here we have the sphere object, and that would take the sphere object and pass it into the extract edges filter. So this is exactly the same as going to sources, calling up the sphere object, making its resolution higher, so theta 36 and phi is 18, and then going to filters, bringing up the extract edges filter, applying to sphere, and then we show, we turn on the visibility of the last object in the pipeline browser. So we make the output of extract edges filter visible, and then we render this output. So let's run this command, display wireframe.py. Here I simply click on run script. And then in the codes directory, I select the display wireframe.py code. I say, okay, and here we go. It ran. So as you can see, it created the sphere. And the sphere is not visible. So I can make it visible if I want. But in the script, it's not visible because uh, when we run show, show will make visible the last object, uh, the last previously created object. So it's the wireframe, the output of the extract edges filter. And it is visible, as you can see here. And if you actually click on the sphere, you see that it's theta resolution 36 and its fine resolution is 18. Now try to think what happens if you replace show right here. So these commands show with show sphere, what will happen? Also, if you want to save this visualization, uh, you can replace render this command with a save screenshot command with a path to a PNG containing your visualization. Now, there is a trace tool built into Paraview that lets you create Paraview Python scripts uh, from the GUI interactions. And this is really great because you don't have to know any Python at all to start writing these scripts. So let me show how this is done. Let me close this window, the Python shell. Let me uh, disconnect from the server. So I'm starting from scratch. I will go to Tools, Start Trains, 
it will ask for uh, to confirm what exactly I'm going to uh, record. So I'm just going to accept the defaults. So now I'm in the recording mode and let me open a file. So from the data directory, I'm going to load the file sign envelope dot nc netcdf file. I'm going to choose netcdf reader. I'm going to click on apply. Now let me switch to a surface view. And then let me call the data set by density variable. Let me spin it around a little bit. And now let me apply a clip filter. So like that. I will spin this a little bit, uh, the uh, plane. And uh, I'm going to say apply. And then let me save this visualization. I'm going to say file, save screenshot. And then I'm going to save it, let's say, into the desktop folder. Call it test, uh, test5, for example. So I'll say OK. It asks me to confirm the resolution, compression level, etc. So I'll just accept the defaults. Here we go. And now I'm going to go to Tools, Stop Trace. And this will give me the Python script that corresponded to what I just did in the GUI. And if you look at this script, it's very easy to understand what's going on. So you can see that here we're loading everything from the private.simple module. And then we are loading the sign envelope C file. Then we're setting various properties. And actually most of these properties are just the default values. So if you know what you're doing, you can actually erase a lot of these things. And these simply set the default values and they will be set anyway. And then we switch to a surface view. So look at the outer surface of our data set. We color this view by density. And then we apply the clip filter. And then there are various properties of the clip filter. So the origin point through uh, which we draw the clipping plane and then the orientation vector. And then various other properties. Most of these are just default values. And then eventually, so we position the camera and eventually we, we save the screenshot. So the same screenshot is saved into the file test5.png in the desktop folder. So let me save this script, I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save it in desktop folder as test5.py.python. So now if I go into my desktop folder right here, I should have two files, a PNG image and the Python script. So let me delete the PNG image. I'm going to remove the image itself. Now I have only the script. And let me go back to Paraview. I'm going to close this window. I'm going to disconnect from the server. Let me go to View, Python Shell. Then I'm going to navigate to Run Script. And then in the desktop folder, I'm going to choose test5.py, the one that I just created. So I'm running this script. And as you can see, it created the visualization, applied the clip filter, and it should save the PNG image. So right here, the PNG image from my visualization was created by the Prevue Python script that we just created from scratch using the trace tool. And if I open this image, all right, here it is. So this is a saved PNG image. Now, let me try to run this script from the command line. So what I'm going to do is I will close Paraview entirely. So I'll go to Paraview quit. And then let me remove uh, the test5 PNG. So now I only have uh, this script. Let me do pvbatch command. So I'm going to say pvbatch followed by the script name. And I'll just say allow. And as you can see, it ran. So let me do ls minus l. So now you see it ran. And it actually created a PNG file without opening the Paraview GUI itself. And if I open the PNG file, uh, here it is. And as you can see, there are some things that are off. So the scaling of the color legend of the color map is off. And uh, uh, this is because in setting the defaults, we were missing the commands that were setting the size and the position of the color legend. 
And you can easily look up these commands. You can either Google them or just find these commands by going into the GUI and then playing with uh, the size of the legend and then using the trace tool to convert the GUI interaction, resizing the legend into the Perby Python script. You will find out which commands uh, let you resize the legend and then you can add these commands uh, to our script.